the end of which is the presentation. We've, we've had presentations over the last uh, couple of meetings from um, the regional amenities and that we fund through the funding board. So we now have Matt, Matt inside, outside. He's outside. Yeah, Matt's, Matt's out there somewhere. <laughs> from the Surf Life Saving Northern Region. Good morning. First and foremost, Surf Life Saving Northern Region would like to start by saying thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present here today. This is our opportunity to acknowledge and thank Auckland Council for their ongoing support and the significant funding we receive every year. This funding literally keeps hundreds of thousands of Auckland beachgoers and visitors to the city safe every time they participate in recreational activity on our beaches. In an environment where council is accountable for every dollar of ratepayer money, we are grateful for the trust and partnership you have extended to us and the ability you have given us to contribute to, to continue serving the community's needs. Although there are many familiar faces around the table today, for the benefit of those who don't know me, I am Matt Williams, Chief Executive Officer of Surf Life Saving Northern Region. Surf Life Saving Northern Region itself probably does not need too much of an introduction, but in essence, we are a volunteer emergency rescue service whose mission is to prevent drowning and injury on the region's beaches and coastlines. We are a volunteer emergency organisation, just like fire, police, ambulance and coast guard. We are not a sport and recreation club. And to deliver our services, we coordinate the activities of the 17 clubs in our region and ensure strong linkages into the wider emergency response and search and rescue services locally. Our clubs range from Waikato's Raglan Beach right up to the top of the North Island, with the 10 Auckland-based clubs covering an area from Kariotahi in the south to Omaha in the north, including patrols at 17 of Auckland's most frequented beaches. That's 10 clubs carrying out 17 patrolled locations. Due to Auckland's climate, accessibility and population, our region undertakes over 40% of the total life-saving activity for the whole of New Zealand. Our main activities include surf life-saving services, club development, community education, sport and leadership development, all of which support the core business of public safety and emergency services. What does this all really mean? It means that every year some of the most frequented and dangerous beaches in New Zealand are kept safe thanks to the work of our amazing volunteers. Again, work that is enabled through our partnership with this council. Recent achievements for the past 12 years, when we, 12 months. When we look at our recent key achievements and outcomes, life-saving comes as a standout. Despite having the highest beach user statistics anywhere in the country, fewer people drown in our beaches per head of population than anywhere else in New Zealand because of the job we do. Let me re-emphasize that. Auckland has the country's busiest beaches. Auckland holds many of the country's most dangerous beaches, and we have some of the most diverse and at-risk populations recreate and use our beaches. Yet, we still have the lowest per capita drowning rate in the country of 0.8 per 100,000. Despite having a long summer where drownings have featured heavily in our national news, for comparison, that is one-fifth the drowning rate of that of Bay of Plenty and half that of Wellington. Surf Life Saving, thanks to the support and partnership with Auckland Council, is directly responsible for this, not just through our patrolling, but our work in educating a generation of Aucklanders, enabling them to safely access our coastal environment. 
This year alone, while acting as the infrastructure that allows safe, monitored recreation to occur at our city's favorite coastal playgrounds, we have been a welcome sight to over 400,000 mums, dads, daughters, tourists, neighbors, councillors, and everything in between at our patrolled locations. When we last reported back this time in 2015, these state stats taken from our hourly head counts, it was just over quarter of a million. We do not think so many people would be enjoying this Taonga that is Auckland's coast if it were not for our services. This season has been a very busy one and in high demand periods we continue to deliver to public need. For the past five years we have continually reported back to council that the current season has been busier than the one before and this season is no different. Business is booming. In the Auckland area, our volunteer and paid lifeguards have put in over 68,000 hours of volunteer patrolling, 10% more than the previous year, which was again was up on the previous year before that. In total, we have rescued 468 people at Auckland's beaches, almost twice that of the previous season. We provided 507 first aid treatments and kept over 100,000 people from getting into difficulty by directly intervening through preventative actions 25% more than previous years. A big part of our role are the preventative actions. They come before the rescues, safety interventions before people need rescuing. And we know we are doing our job well in a busy season when our preventative actions have increased by 25% on last season, which again was 50% more than the season before that. Again, let's reflect on those numbers. Our volunteer patrol hours are up over 9,000 hours in the Auckland area, with Murawai Beach still currently patrolling late into April. We rescued almost twice as many people and have a 25% increase on the number of people we have assisted before they got into trouble. Where would you be without us, Auckland? The second area of success, sustainability. Our ongoing quest for sustainability has met with success in both the financial and club sustainability areas. But as I said earlier, business is booming, and the reality is that hurts us financially. We do not enjoy the luxury of the standard business model where more work equals more billable hours and profit from our margins. Every bandage applied costs us. Every life saved does too. And while we have sophisticated sponsorship and partnership arrangements that we continually work on and add to, and strong relationships with grant and gaming funders that we, can, that we continue to grow during a tough market, despite these new initiatives and ventures, the reality is every new volunteer member costs us, and we had 400 of those this year. Every extra hour of patrolling costs us, and we had hundreds of those, and every rescue costs us too. This has doubled and continues to grow. While we fully understand the concept of sustainability and invest considerable resource in growing the commercial value of our brand and creating new and long-term revenue streams, the reality is that we cannot adjust these income streams to match our increased operational costs from a busy season, and we've had plenty of those. The last five have all been bigger than the one before, and regulatory changes bring new regional costs as well. We cannot go to our sponsors and funders year to year to ask for more because we are doing more, and we cannot ask for more from our membership. As such, yes, our costs are increasing, but not as much as our value or our need. We will continue to work towards the most sustainable model achievable, but we also need you to understand we are different. When our supply levels fall out of equilibrium, we cannot make the, eco the economic decision to drop supply. That would mean drownings. We don't sell tickets. There is no concession to our beaches, nor should there ever be. We don't have high-priced memberships, as our members do the towing, and we don't charge our club for membership or affiliation, as they already give enough. However, one way we can equitably gather funds is through the ratepayer, by which the Arefa Act has provided a sound process, one we continue trying to replicate in the Northland and Waikato areas. Of course, the biggest part of our sustainable future is about our people and our membership numbers. In Auckland, these continue to grow, and pleasingly, a main area of growth is in our junior surf. The growth of junior surf means that we have more members entering into our pathway of surf lifesaving and also means that we are reaching sustainable sustainability, more of the community with our surf safety messages through all of the parents and our junior surf members. Education. As we mature and move more towards the, pre the preventative end of the scale, 
the smoke alarm as opposed to the fire truck, education is becoming more, increasingly more important to help tackle the new challenges presented by the growth and diversity in migrant populations in Auckland, many of whom do not share the same levels of awareness of the dangers of Auckland's beaches. Surf education has grown in many ways over the last few years, most noticeably so in our most high impact beach education program, which teaches school aged children surf safety in the best possible environment at our surf life saving facilities and taught by our lifeguard instructors. Since the 2014-15 season, our beach education participation has continued to grow. This year it has grown by nearly 42% with nearly 13,000 children going through the program this year. Beach education is by far and away the most popular of our surf safety education programs and it is viewed as experiential learning versus the classroom based surf to school program. Just like junior surf, the value of surf education extends well beyond the students as the program calls for the help of parents and teachers for in water supervision so they all take home our surf safety messages. Another success story has been our City Nippers program, which is literally bursting at the seams. City Nippers is one of our newer programs aimed at the urban demographic who can't get to a surf club location for our traditional junior surf model. This year, all of our programs were full to capacity, and the growth and demand for this program has led us to begin a review of our community education suite to ensure we continue delivering to the city's need and no child gets turned away from our programs. Our leadership development courses and youth camps also allow our young lifeguards to develop the skills and confidence necessary to be an influential role model within the communities they live in and prepare themselves for the leadership roles later in life. What we are currently working on. Looking forward to the future, we have plenty going on off the beach to keep us occupied and many new initiatives planned in the coming year to continue our growth and enhance the value we create within the Auckland region. In particular, areas of focus for the coming year are a full-scale review of our biggest cost centre, the Regional Lifeguard Service, which contracts with councils to deliver weekday lifeguard services when our lifeguards can't be there during the peak summer months. Greater partnering and collaboration with other emergency services. Fully review our community education programmes to ensure education is effectively delivered. Hit some mask. Hit some mark, at-risk segments are identified and better catered to, and we are delivering to the most cost-effective mo cost model. Continuing to build superior event safety capability to support the growth of Auckland as a le leading region for water sports. Showcase to the world the sports side of surf lifesaving on our Auckland beaches as part of the World Masters Games. Developing a future-proof digital strategy. Continuing to strengthen financial capability through long-term commercial partnerships and strengthen club sustainability through the effective delivery of the SURF 1020 program and enhanced governance, financial, health and safety, constitutional and strategic discipline. This last one is a big one for us with many significant regulatory changes that will, that will provide the platform for us to positively change the landscape we operate in. This year SLS and R is looking at one of its biggest years off the beaches to date as we roll out new changes to the public benefit entity accounting framework develop a leading health and safety culture to ensure our practices off the beach are as good as those we provide to the public, develop and roll out a new fit for purpose contribution uh, constitution, and further challenge our clubs on the most equitable and efficient allocation of operational funding. What are we hoping to achieve from all this? As an organisation, we understand acutely the responsibility we have to deliver value, not only to the community, but also to the member clubs we serve. More and more we understand the need to grow the regional office in capacity and capability to ensure we provide the necessary resource and leadership to our member clubs. Again, this growth costs. In order to fulfil our primary purpose of preventing drownings on our beaches, we have to ensure our organisation is working in partnership with council, our community and with commercial partners to maximise the value of our organisation creates. To do this, we need to continually be ahead, ahead of the curve attracting young volunteers to our movement, and in a world of increasing lifestyle choice and opportunity, the experience we give our lifeguards, the appearance and the users of our beaches are critical to ensuring our beaches remain a crown jewel in the Auckland lifestyle and tourist choices. And all of this must be done in an environment where we can all admit it takes more and more to be a volunteer. The outcomes we are looking to create for our stakeholders include maintaining a zero drowning statistic between our flags and making a significant impact on the drowning rate of risk outside of the flags. 
making our flags a destination, delivering superior beach experiences through residents, tourists, volunteers and partners through our professionalism and service. Grow our reputation as a leading organisation with the emergency services and water safety education sectors. Grow our brand and ensure our treasured status in communities, great culture and goodwill associated with our brand can be of commercial value to our partners and sponsors. Ensure our organisation's future through securing stable funding, effective resource usage and increased capability within our people and clubs. Engage the public and provide an education pathway to increased community capability on our beaches. Retain and grow our talented youth leaders and volunteers and continue our traditions of being in it for life as individuals and as families. Again, I would like to personally thank all of you for your ongoing advocacy and support for our service. We ask for your support to help us ensure our beaches remain a safe and well-utilised public asset and to ensure Auckland's reputation as an active and outdoor city is enhanced. You have continued to support us strongly and we believe we continue to, to deliver value for you and your community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matt.